Chris did. I'm surprised now. Welcome back into the Sports Source. Good to have you back here right now with holidays and warm summer days upon us. It's the right time to take a Feed 5 or Feed 10 family pack to a picnic, a family reunion, or just out for a day on the lake right there. Calhoun's Feed 5, Feed 10 packs include all the fixings, and now, sure, you can get them with barbecue. That's always been the plan, but now you can get them with ribs as well. So if you're going out on the lake, whatever. And Chuck was pointing out, being the environmentalist that he is, he was pointing out earlier, <laughs> that once you're finished eating, you just put it back in this and this is your trash and you carry the trash with you. Exactly, I mean, it's perfect for that. It's it a really great is. deal, Calhoun's, boy, Thank you. Calhoun's <laughs> with their Feed 5 and Feed 10 family packs. Check them out all summer long. Okay, uh, just to remind you, we all submitted ballots for the biggest heroes and villains in Vol football since the Sports Source launched in 2003. Time for our first look at some of the villains. All of these guys received at least two votes from the panel. James Franklin, <laughs> okay, James Franklin, who was at Vanderbilt, beat Tennessee twice reportedly flipped off the fans on one occasion, talked smack, tweeted a little smack at, at Jalen Hurd when he came to Tennessee, or about Jalen Hurd. Then you got the SEC West. <laughs> Tennessee, <laughs> since 2003, mm. Tennessee is 11 and 28 against the West. Mm. 11 and 28. And it's a lot worse. If you just look at the last 10 years of that and take off those first four, it's a lot worse looking. Yeah, because they beat Alabama a few times right. early on yeah. in that run. Yeah. Then you've got Dabo Swinney, which I put him on my list, and, and I'm surprised that, that other folks did, somebody else did. But the reason I put him down was he closed, you know, Tennessee used to recruit well in South Carolina. Now, Spurrier yeah. helped change that, but yeah. Clemson has certainly changed that. You can't get into South Carolina as much as you used to. And also, now he's coming over here and setting up his own pipeline. So I think Dabo Swinney's becoming a villain. Tim Tebow, it's hard to picture him as a villain. Exactly. But it's kind of like, to put it in biblical terms for him, he was kind of Goliath. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then you got Vanderbilt, as well as Jane Frank. Vanderbilt makes it, <laughs> that ties to Franklin. But also, over the last 12 years, Vandy's 4-8 and eight yeah. against Tennessee. They've beaten Fulmer, Dooley, and Jones. That's a rivalry. It is. Yes. So, uh, your thoughts on those villains? Agreements, disagreements? Anybody? You'd I think that might have be been George there? Cafago's list. Since <laughs> Vanderbilt <laughs> and James Franklin were on there, we know how much George Cafago. Yeah. Derek Mason saying, "Where's my love?" You know. <laughs> it's a shame the, uh, that Tennessee can't get the Big Ten West instead of the SEC West <laughs> yeah. in the rotation. Uh, but that SEC West thing. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a gambling stat, John. For the, for the past several years, the West is an 80% winner. How would you know about that? I read a lot. <laughs> but, I mean, the SEC West is an 80% winner against the East. Right. And it I doesn't mean, matter where they play. I mean, you, you, if they play, you really have to take the West Division team. I know this is a 15-year window, but, but I, I felt pretty strong about the West because Butch Jones hadn't beaten anybody from the West. And Zero. so that stat, he's 0 for 8. Mm. So that stat is becoming even worse more recently than it was the first. I bet the, if you went back to the 15 year period, the first five years wouldn't be so bad. Mm -hmm. But more recently, the West has just been mopping up. You even go back to uh, Lane Kiffin against Ole Miss and Dexter McCluster still running. He yeah. would get 250 yards against him. Yeah. So the 11 o'clock kickoff or whatever. Well, that it one was. has been, that's been tough on Tennessee. The so West. is Darren and McFadden. It, <laughs> yeah, and, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's like whatever year Tennessee takes somebody not named Alabama from the West, that team seems to be really good that year. Well, exactly. You're, you're getting this year. You get LSU. Well, that's who everyone's picking as the team to beat not named Alabama. Mm -hmm. So you got Alabama and LSU is favored as number two in the SEC this year. You drew them again. Uh, and that, you know, that works against Butch Jones that, yeah, you're 0-8, but nobody else has had to play Alabama mm -hmm. four times in that span. Right. Still that nobody's going to be sitting there thinking about that on a Saturday afternoon if you lose to LSU again. They're going to be screaming 0-9, oh, 0-10. Oh, Which makes that doing. overtime loss at Texas A&M last season even that much more of kind of a something you still hadn't got over that hump. You could have ended all You could talk. have ended all that right then. Mm -hmm. um, let's put the list back up. Guys, uh, anybody else stand out to you in terms of Franklin, Swinney, Tebow, uh, Vanderbilt in general? Uh, you know, Vanderbilt. Yes. People, there's still a lot of people who believe you know, Tennessee should never lose, lose to Vanderbilt. Them. Those days have changed. That's not, that's not reality anymore. And it's not just because Tennessee isn't what they mm -hmm. used to be. College football has changed. Vanderbilt isn't the doormat they were. I'm not trying to cover up that loss last year. That was embarrassing. That was terrible, especially with what you had at stake. But the Vanderbilt thing, I think that, that's going to require a little bit of a change in, in attitude, in my opinion, on how you look at that rivalry. I put Franklin up there in part of that because I think he's the one that yeah. made Vanderbilt think it could yeah. be Tennessee. And he beat him twice. 
and I think there might have been a little bit of a carryover that helped Vanderbilt last year, Derek Mason. But and then you mentioned this too. So Franklin sends out that tweet about Jalen Hurd mm -hmm. and other little shots he was taking at Tennessee. Uh, so I think Franklin deserves his rating of a villain. I, he is the perfect villain. He should have a black handlebar <laughs> mustache and a black hat. He, I mean, with the, yeah, you're right. With not, not, not just not beating Tennessee, black. but but but. Uh, Trash talking about it. And, and, and this year, even Derek Mason doing that little dance there on the sidelines. That's how you get to be a villain. Well, you and, know. and here's another thing about Franklin. He continues to hurt you because, one, he created the – now Vanderbilt can say we go to, to, with Tennessee. But also, he's the one that convinced them to ease up a little bit on the academic standards, reportedly, how they're getting in there a little bit easier. Also, they poured more money into Vanderbilt. He wanted more money mm -hmm. into the football department. They mm -hmm. poured it in there. The new coach, whoever, you know, if it's Mason, whoever's next on the line, those guys are going to reap the dividends of now you got a little bit better stadium. <laughs> you got a little <laughs> bit better facilities. So he continues to hurt you because that success he had, he forced them to put more money back into the program and to make some changes that give Vanderbilt, you know, at least a little bit more fair footing in the Southeastern Conference. Um, Tebow, you go back to Tebow, and it's just even that freshman year. And yeah. especially the freshman especially year. Especially the freshman yeah. year. Because you know why he's coming into the game. It's Chris Leak was your starter. Yeah. It, when it's short yardage, you'd run this guy in there. He would take the snap and run straight ahead, and you could not stop him. And it went like that for the next four years, next three years. But still, uh, from the first time he stepped on the field against Tennessee, he was kind of the, the bane of the Volunteers' existence. Well, he was. And uh, he kind of was on the front end of that streak where Florida had won. Was it 11 in a row? Yeah. Yeah, he was on the front end of that. And then there was a, a couple of embarrassing Florida wins over Tennessee with Tebow at the helm. So, yeah, he uh, what he did as a freshman in that particular game, as you said, everybody knows what's going to happen. You still can't stop the guy. That was sort of gave you an indication of how good this guy was going to be. And he, he's the anti-James Franklin. I mean, he, he's in all other senses the good guy. Yeah. yeah. He was tweeting nice things about Tennessee. Yeah. But, <laughs> Sorry we beat you so bad. A lot of people around here didn't like the guy. Yeah. <laughs> but he still can't so, hit the curveball. Oh, come on. Still picking on him. There we go. All right. When we come back, we've got uh, three more of the heroes to get to. One of these names, I don't know how many people would think of. I love it. I think it's a good one. Uh, a couple of it. This is good. Come on back for the next segment of The Sports Source. <laughs> 